Somebody give Jesus a big hand. If you are not here to see me or hear me, but you are here to see Jesus and hear Jesus, give Jesus a big hand. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Please have your seat. You know, oftentimes when, um, when, uh, when a minister of God is introduced, um, it appears as if people just want to hear the man of God. Please, I want to beg you, uh, don't he- listen to me. Listen to God tonight. Amen. Uh, um, don't look at me. Look at God tonight. Amen. Don't look at what I'm wearing. Don't look at my accent. Just be attentive. Be intentional. Be conscious. And say, Lord, I want to get something from you today. Amen. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, all the leadership of the church. Um, Pastor Adeyinka is not here. I saw him uh, somewhere the last time. I'm, I'm very grateful um, uh, to our uh, daddy here as well, bro. King Beth, thank you very much. I'm very grateful. Bro, Eric uh, and my sister, Sheila. <laughs> we are, it's the first time we are meeting. Uh, she has a sister in New Zealand called Faye. And I went to her and said, the moment I saw you, I don't need any introduction. I just straight away knew... <laughs> Here is Faith version 2. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody give Jesus a big hand one more time. Amen. For what God is set to do uh, this evening, I want to employ you. And I want to please beg you to go grab a pen and paper. If you don't have one, I'll give you one minute. Grab a pen and paper or your phone or your iPad or something. Something you can take notes. Because what you're about to hear, I promise by the grace of God, will change your life forever. Amen. So I want you to please make sure you write something down. If, if, if something is suggesting to you right now not to write anything down, don't worry. That's the devil. Amen. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so serious. Amen. What you're about to hear will transform your life forever. So please make sure you find a pen or a paper or your phone or your iPad. If you're on that phone, put it to airplane mode as well. So that all those Facebook uh, and Snapchat notifications are not disturbing you. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you for what you're about to do. We give you praise because it's not about anybody here. It's about you. And any time your word is about to go out, you're about to change somebody's life. In fact, your occurrence in the last two days is very evident that you want to change somebody's life here. Father Lord, we pray that nothing will hinder you from doing what you want to do in our lives today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Touch every life here. Transform our lives. Let us not be the same again. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I thought they said this is a youth conference. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Ah, I don't know about you, but uh, when they say something is youth conference, it's normally different from a normal Sunday service. You normally see crazy people. Cra- crazy in a good way. Like people who are mad for Jesus. People that they are doing praise and worship and they are putting chairs on their head. People who are lying down under the anointing and they are under the chair. For the anointing. Amen. All, all of you are looking like you are sanctimonious individuals. Amen. Like they went to go and bring you from one, uh, from one uh, holy service somewhere. And they, they, they took water and food away from you for 40 days. Amen. Amen. If you are here, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Can I enjoy that we come forward? If you are at the back, just come forward. Come forward. Come forward. Amen. Today I want to talk about, I tried to fit this topic into the God is, uh, and it was a bit, it was sounding very funny. You know, if I say God is illogical, but I would rather say it as the God of illogical steps. Somebody said the God of illogical. You are going to be saying a lot of things, so you better get used to it. Say the God of illogical steps. Say the God of illogical steps. Say the God of illogical steps. Amen. And as you know that God today, your life will not remain the same again in the mighty name of Jesus. What do we know about this God of illogical steps? We know very clearly that the Bible says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Psalm 37 verse 33. It says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. And the end part of that verse 33 says, uh, 23 says, and he delights in his way. Psalm 37 verse 23. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Underline the steps. And then underline ordered. And I've come to discover something that God leads in steps. 
So what God usually do is that he will show you where you are going, which I will talk about tomorrow morning. Please don't miss tomorrow morning if you are here. He shows you where you are going. Shows you that glorious future. Shows you that you are a king. You are a priest. You are a wonderful evangelist. You are world renowned. You are a world class. Shows you that future. But what he doesn't do is to tell you how you are going to get there. You know why? Because he wants you to trust him with every step. Every step. That's why the Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the ordered by the law. It's like literally, practically, sir. When God is leading you and he has shown you that I want to take you to that drum over there. He's literally saying hallelujah. And he pauses and he asks you to have a look around. Amen. Hallelujah. And he takes the Brady, you are, you are rushing. Okay. <laughs> you are taking two steps by one. <laughs> and that's how some of us are. We think we know the next step. Wow. You think you know what God... I mean, uh -uh. is it not God? Yes. Is he not facing this way? And is, has he not shown that I'm going there? Yeah. But you know what God does? <laughs> that's where you're going. But that's where we're going. Please have your seat, sir. The God of illogical steps. Sometimes it appears you are facing opposite where he has shown you. But that's just your own thinking. But he's still taking you there. It's just by your own human logic that you are calculating that if God is going to make me a world-renowned medical doctor, then it means that the first um, admission to the university must be a medical degree. <laughs> so, when you apply and they refuse to give you that medical degree, you're like, ah, uh -uh. but God, you said that I will be a world renowned medical doctor. God said, follow me. <laughs> and he takes the step. And he takes the step. But it's not looking logical. Because human beings, we understand logic. And guess what? Even the devil understands logic. That's why God doesn't lead you logically. Because the devil will calculate where God is going. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. But our God is not a God of logic. Let me preach to your neighbor. Hit that neighbor. Slap the neighbor by the back. Say, God is not a God of logic. <laughs> Amen. In case that person is sleeping. Slap the person very well. Amen. So when he says, take the step, and he's ordering your step, and that's where he's taking you, you may be surprised the step will go like this. And it will go like this. And like this. And you're like, ah! And like this. And, in, in the, in the, and, and he will be leading you into heartbreak. And he has promised you a wonderful marriage. Leading you into disappointments. And he's promised you a great future. Leading you into a studies that you keep getting F and F and F. And you're like, but God, you said, God said, just follow me. Just follow me. Illogical steps. Illogical steps. When I came to New Zealand, I had a big dream. The big dream was to be a young professor. So I came... To the glory of God, we are a little bit smart. Just a little bit. So we finished the PhD. Normally where we are coming from, logically, when you finish PhD, you are the boss. You boss over everybody. Somebody shout hallelujah. And God said, let's take this step. <laughs> and I couldn't get a job. Talk less of boss anybody. And I couldn't get a job. And the job I eventually got was a $37,500 job. A graduate, fresh graduate job. With P-H dot D. 
Somebody say the God of illogical steps. Help me find out your neighbor. Slap that neighbor again. Say the God of illogical See, just in case your steps are not looking logical right now, and you're about to give up on God, thank God you are here. Yes. Amen. Just in case it's not everything happening in your life right now, it doesn't look logical. It doesn't look straight. And I have looked at all the scriptures. There is nobody that God led logically. Not even Jesus. You, you, we, you, uh, read the story of Jesus. Did it look like Jesus was going to die? And even when he died, can you calculate how he will rise up? <laughs> Nothing God does that is logical. That's why the Bible says his ways are not our. No, no, in other words, the mathematics of God is not the same as your mathematics. Amen. Amen. Two, one plus one in your own books is equal to two. But when God put his own one plus one together... Is never equal to two. Please slap your neighbor. Say one plus one with God is not equal to two. Slap another neighbor. Say one plus one with God is not equal to two. Before the devil starts using mathematics to discourage your life, but you have finished BSc, how come you are not married? The logical thing is after you finish, you are meant to get married. Somebody will fall in love with you and you're meant to get married. That's a logical thing. The logical thing is before you turn 30, you just find that certain somebody. And by the time you're 25, everybody walk down there. Ta, 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 ta. But instead of singing, ta, 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 everybody sing, Sorry for those no, for non yoruba speakers. You understand what I'm trying to say? Amen. The God of illogical steps. When I was coming on the plane today, God told me that somebody here has given up. Because nothing is looking logical. You've tried everything logically possible. And you're giving up already. You're like, what else in the books do I have to try? You've tried everything in the books. You've spoken to people. You've done certifications. You have networked. You have joined associations. You've prayed in church. Everything logically possible, you have done it. But nothing seems to be happening. And you're like, I don't know what area of your life that is that you've given up. But one thing I want to show you today, because we don't have too much time. Verse 24 of that same Psalms 37. He says, though he fall. Somebody says, though he fall. He shall not be utterly cast down. So in that steps. In that steps, is, is God that is leading you. Remember that verse 23 said, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. And he now said, though he fall. Logically, is he supposed to fall? Uh, because God is leading him now. But God is still saying, even in that leading, though he fall. Anybody ever fall in here? Let me see your hand up. So you, everybody will understand what I'm talking about. Though he falls. And that's why when you fall, the enemy will say, ah, finish. Logically, you are done. Amen. When you fall, logically, it's finished. Especially when you fall into a pit. But the Bible says that though he falls, <laughs> the Bible says he will not be utterly cast down. In other words, God will raise him up. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Slap your neighbor. Tell that neighbor, say, though you fall, God will catch you in the mighty name of Jesus. Another version of that scripture, the Passion Translation says, if they stumble badly, if they stumble badly, they will survive. Anybody ever read Passion Translation? He said, if they stumble badly, they will still survive. If you stumble with bruises, stumble like you almost want to die, the Bible says you will still survive. <laughs> I don't care how the devil has made you stumble. And stumble, not just stumble, but stumble badly. Anybody ever had a heartbreak before and it looks like you're about to die? 
or you failed the final year exam. And the whole of your colleagues, they are greeting themselves, congratulations. And everybody knew you failed. So when they reach you, they say, the Lord is your strength. It is well. It is well. It is well. All your mates are getting jobs. And it appears they're getting the job sharp, sharp, sharp. You know? But you're own. Huh? And you're even more qualified. And there are many people who are not even qualified. But they're even getting the better jobs. And it appears yours is, what's wrong with me? I remember when I started my PhD. And I had colleagues, people who could, even, who could not even speak English. Half of the English I know how to speak. They were moving on successfully with their supervisors. Me, my supervisor kept on telling me, Samuel, you do not have the right qualities of a PhD student. Ah, you said, ah, I cried, oh. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I will write things, the man will say, rubbish. Throw it in the bin. Go and write again. I did that for a whole year. I'm not kidding. After the whole year, this man, they asked him to write my progress report. He said, I'm no longer confident in continuing with Samuel. I recommend termination. And this is me that God showed me since the age of 14 that I'll be a young professor. I'm not talking about wish. I'm talking about showed me. God of illogical steps. He showed me there. But he just failed me. Opposite. And I will go to my room every day and I will cry. This is a true story. It's not a super story. I will cry. I will weep. Talk about depression. I was depressed. Depressed. Down. I felt used, abused, reduced, and oppressed. And everything. It was not like what God showed me. In fact, I remember God showed me another dream within the same problem. And this dream, I was inside a, an helicopter. And it was me and the pastor, my pastor at that time, Pastor James Cameron. Both of us were inside the, the helicopter. And the helicopter crashed. But what I noticed, to the glory of God, I still remember the dream till today. Because it was a significant dream. And some of you, God will show you some things tonight. Amen. That will change your life forever. It was a significant dream. We, the helicopter crashed. Normally, people were supposed to be weeping and crying and putting their hands on their head for us. But guess what? We came out of the crashed helicopter unhurt, unharmed. And we walked into a big hall where millions of people were waiting for us and they were clapping when we came in and we collected the mic and we were speaking. When I, when I got the dream, I told my dad, I said, Daddy, the, 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 this was exactly what I said. The helicopter crashed. Daddy said, what happened after? <laughs> Somebody said, your helicopter will not crash. Hey, even if it crashes, you are coming into glory. My dad said, what happened after that? Remember, though they fall badly, though they stumble what? Badly. Badly. Even though the helicopter crashed, even though they terminate your, your appointment. Even though they sack you at work. Even though nobody understands your journey. Even though they are not greeting you congratulations. Even though all your mates are getting married. Even though it appears nothing is going to happen for you. Even if you stumble. Badly. Badly. Even though you are struggling with an addiction. Even though says they will still survive. And I see someone here, you will survive. Yeah. You will not only survive, you will be a joy of many generations. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Another version said, <laughs> the message says, if he stumbles, he's not down for long. In other words, your comeback power is massive. <laughs> you know what they call comeback power? Have you ever seen someone they beat down in the boxing ring? Before the referee counts one, he's down, he's up. You say you can beat somebody, continue. <laughs> he's not down for long. No 
Nobody is with God that is down for long. God of illogical steps. Help me pray to your neighbor. Say, you will not be down for long. You can never be down for long. Ah! I love how NLT put it. NLT said, they, though they stumble, they will never fall. <laughs> though they stumble, they will never. Wow. Let's, let's move on because of our time. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16 says it like this. They say, for a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again. So I don't care how long you've been falling. It doesn't matter how many times you have been. It doesn't matter. Help me pray to your neighbor. Say, it does not matter. Rise again. High five somebody. Say, rise again. Say, rise again. Ha <laughs> ha. You know, when, when they killed Jesus, the devil was smiling. <laughs> there was party in hell. <laughs> Finished. Because, I, I mean, Jesus was supposed to come and dominate the earth. Supposedly. And deliver the earth. That's the, that's the, but they killed him halfway here. Devil said, aha! <laughs> See? <laughs> what is he coming to do again? And I was partying in hell. It was the same hell Jesus went to go and meet him. <laughs> and was collecting keys from him. Remember those keys? Some of you, there are some keys that the devil appears to be taking. I've taken from your life. And he's celebrating. God said, I should tell you. He's going right now, down. To get those keys. To your deliverance. To your breakthrough. To your lamb light. In the mighty name of Jesus. To your consistent relationship with God. Especially for those that are struggling. In the mighty name of Jesus. And, and, and God illogically. Rose Jesus from the dead. And that's why many people to today could not understand it. How? Let me. Let me. Let me quickly, because of our time, I want to quickly show you a few examples. Number one, Joseph. God showed Joseph that he was going to be a ruler. That even his brothers and his parents would bow down before him. And I don't know here, we'll talk about vision tomorrow. That's what we're talking about. God is a God of vision. I don't know what God has shown you. But he's shown you that you will bow, uh, they will bow down to you. That you will be, like, like Stashila was saying, you will be a, a, a world class in the marketplace. You will be a, a, a gospel financier and all of that. But it was the same Joseph. The Bible says the brothers hated him. The same brothers that were supposed to bow down to him. Right? They hated him. Logically, let us reason together. Logically, how do you think that dream was supposed to come to pass? Proverb, sir? They will love him and they will say, oh, our brother. Because of the dream that you have. Oh, my gosh. Igwe. <laughs> But somebody that they hate. And then another logic to it might be that maybe Jacob will die, the father. And then somehow they will now make him a lawyer, be, um, um, the um, head of the family. Yes. Make last born, the head of family. <laughs> right? That logically, that's what you would think that will happen, right? Logically. Or something will happen, there will be a war, and it will be Joseph that will conquer. Yeah. You know, if, if let us reason by mathematics. And they would just say, ah, because Joseph is the warrior. Oh, yeah. And I want to tell somebody here today. Your logic might be that you are calculating how God did it for Bro Eric. So, do we, okay, God did it for Bro Eric like this. Okay. So, like this. He, he applied to, um, what's the name of the company? He applied to X and X, Fit Y Limited. Okay. Me too, I'm here. That was, it was this point, Bro Eric applied to X and X. Well, let me too go and apply for X and S. I mean, it's the same God that is leading us. And you will discover by the time you apply to X and S, they reject you and reject and they reject. You know there's some rejection that is not natural. <laughs> that will look like it's personal. <laughs> they will write to you, we regret to advise you. In fact, can you please not apply? <laughs> 
Somebody say the God of illogical steps. Say the God of illogical Let me finish that story because of our time. They terminated me. And I cried. And I would cry. And I would look at all my colleagues. People who couldn't even speak English. People I was helping to proofread their work before they submitted to their supervisors. And I was there. But do you know what happened? The same afternoon. Somebody said the same afternoon. One, I didn't even know God was at work. And they just called, um, no, I was in the, in lo having lunch. Uh, not having lunch, I was in the kitchen. And this lecturer just came in. I said, oh, I heard about all that is going on with you. So, um, what are you going to do about it? Ah, I said, I don't know. So the man just left, and I left. I didn't know God was cooking anything. Then one of my colleagues and friends now came to my office and said, would you be interested in following us to Auckland? I said, what do you mean by follow us? He said, my supervisor, which was the man I met in the kitchen, said, uh, they are trans he's, he's seeking a transfer. He's gotten, a, he's gotten an appointment to Auckland, and he needs PhD students. Ah, ah. And you are not even going to lose any year. We will transfer. I said, I am <laughs> super interested. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So I said, but how is it going to work? I've, they've terminated me here. And he said, we'll just try. Do you know that that man, that supervisor, wrote for me um, from, Victor, that was Victoria University of Wellington, AUT in Auckland, wrote a testimonial for me that I am his PhD student from Wellington. And he's bringing me along to Auckland. I didn't ask him to write it. He wrote it himself. So that they should transfer me and these other students. So they transferred all of us. The same proposal that was terminated was the same proposal that I finished PhD. Hey, I, I, the story has not finished. When, when we got to Auckland, the only requirement they asked for the transfer was a termination letter. They said, because I cannot be in two schools at the same time, I should go and bring termination letter from the other school. See, if you don't slap your neighbor this time, I will, I will slap them myself. Slap your neighbor. Say, your God is at work. In your life, say your God is at work. In your life, say your God is at work. The same termination letter that was meant to bring tears was the requirement for the next level. I, I tell you, when God is at work in your, it's not logical. It doesn't make sense. I'm not kidding. They, they asked me to go and bring the termination letter from Victoria. So I didn't even need to go and ask them. I already have it. <laughs> the God of illogical steps. I, I already had the termination. I was even, do you want it now? <laughs> or you want me to come back later? <laughs> because I have it. I have it with me. <laughs> the same thing I was crying over every night. Was the requirement for my for my next level, and I guess what I didn't lose any day, because it was a transfer. Though they fall, they will survive. Though they, they they stumble, they will not fall. I want to pray for somebody here. Please rise up on your feet. Put your two hands up. I don't know how it appears you are falling and you are stumbling and you have tried and you are about to die. Somebody, please come on the keyboard. The time is gone. We'll finish. Please, I don't, I, don't, I don't care how the devil appears to have wrecked you and it appears you're about to die. You, you, you've, you've, you've tried everything logical and logic is not even making sense right now. God said I should tell you that you are rising again. He's lifting you up. He's giving you a testimony right from that pit in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says that even in the pit, God will deliver you. Joseph, that story of Joseph, the same person God showed was the same person that was put in a pit. It was not logical. Normally when you are in a pit, you are meant to die there. But God took him out of the pit. As if that was not worse enough. Illogically again, they sold him to slavery. I mean, who becomes a king from slave? To from being a slave? Who, who does that? This man went again as a slave. But God was saying, <laughs> the devil, you, you don't even know how to play this game. Ah! And the same slave 
to prison. It didn't make sense. It's like they are finishing somebody gradually and gradually. And the next thing was from prison to death. Because there was no report that was going to come out. It was a life sentence. But the same life sentence become a crown sentence. 